Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar. This is the one-day chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin was settling, uh, sitting right on top of the uh, 3,400 uh, support, guys. It's still basically sitting there now. We had this uh, this drop in price, which we warned about. Uh, I told you guys yesterday, I'm, I'm waiting for a, uh, a possible trade setup uh, to where we get a nice little bounce, this rejection off of this descending, the top of this wedge here, a uh, little rejection off that descending uh, resistance line. And I'm wanting to come down and possibly enter into a position somewhere down in this area right here guys this is the area that i'm looking for an entry uh, at least again on coinbase that's going to be somewhere around 3250 to 3350 somewhere thereabouts guys that's kind of what i'm watching um, and i still believe that that is in play Looking at this, if this wedge does get validated, we should get a possible drop in price, um, and that, that drop in price should come with some decent volume, um, some obvious sell, obviously selling volume. So if we do get that drop in price um, that is backed up by that selling volume, people selling off should come down here, trigger a lot of buy orders, and that should take us um, again. If this if this descending wedge is validated, that should take us into a nice spike up um, to at least this area right here, guys. And this is where I told you yesterday um, I would not. Not be looking at this for a long swing trade at all. I'd be looking at this um, as a uh, a day trade, possibly, possibly uh, a swing trade, um, i.e., holding it for a day or two. But I'd be wanting to get in and get out of this trade very quickly, guys, until we do break this bearish pattern. So I'd be looking for an entry between 3350 and 3250. I'd be looking to get out somewhere between 3400 and 30 uh, uh, 3450, somewhere in this area. At least take your uh, at least take your investment off the table at this point. If this does end up happening, guys, um, in the area area that I would absolutely get out. Um, and again, this is a little more risky, but if you want to kind of let it ride, I'd be looking to get out right here, um, right in this area, somewhere around 3,500, 3,550. That's where, that's the area that I'd be looking to get out because I'd be expecting a rejection off that area. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just means guys, you need to protect your fiat and there's no reason to get greedy until we do break this trend. And remember guys, the overall trend, there's no question. This overall trend is bearish. It will get broken at some point, but right now it's not. So we got to, we have to, uh, you know, we have to play the, uh, the hand that we're dealt right now. The, um, we're, we'd be bucking the trend. Um, so I just want to make sure you guys kind of know what I'm thinking, what I'm watching for, you know, doesn't mean this is going to happen. I mean, this thing could turn around and break out at any moment. This thing could completely crash, which is why I said I'm going to be watching or I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, um, uh, I'm going to have, if these orders do get filled, I'm going to have a very tight stop loss sitting at about uh, 3,200, somewhere in that neighborhood, guys, because if this thing does break down, we could quickly find ourselves down at $3,000 very, 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 very quickly. Um, Excuse me, guys. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. Um, zooming in here to the one hour chart, guys, we can see we've kind of made, uh, let me kind of get in here so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we can see that we can kind of made this double bottom uh, pattern right here. Price came down. Um, created this low, at least for this this structure here, created this low on Coinbase that was somewhere around uh, 3340-ish, somewhere thereabouts. Came back down and tested right here with a wick, bounced right off of that low again, possible double bottom. We didn't get a major bounce um, at all. Uh, so calling that a double bottom, I uh, you know I take that with, uh, for what it's worth. Um, I do still though believe, guys, uh, the fact that we did not get a nice little bounce off here, the fact that we're still kind of consolidating sideways, the fact that volume remains um, extremely low. We're sitting at about uh, 5.4 for the day, 5.4 billion for the day, which is very, very low. It does lead me to believe that price is uh, very likely to collapse. Now, uh, at least down to that, uh, down to our buy zone there between 3350 and 3250. Now coming over here, looking at longs and shorts, we had this nice spike in longs and we at the same time we had a nice spike in short positions now longs are still certainly outpacing uh, outpacing shorts uh, which again leads me to believe that market makers may drive price down at least in the short term and then kind of fake everybody out and turn it right back around um, that's a real possibility but the fact that longs and shorts are both uh, both kind of spiked at the same time means some people are hedging their bets um, what do I mean by that I mean that a lot of this this could literally go either way we're getting kind of some we're getting kind of some mixed signals we obviously have a possible bullish pattern with this descending wedge here at the same time we are extremely bearish with volume remaining uh, extremely low the overall trend is extremely low we have no bullish news um, and coming and zooming all the way out as I showed you guys many many times zooming all the way out to the uh, uh, the uh, weekly chart 
Now let me bring up the weekly chart here. Zooming all the way out to the weekly chart, guys, you can kind of see that uh, you know this whole thing is extremely bearish. When we broke through that thirty-six hundred uh, dollar support, uh, came back down, tried to break above it. Uh, what was support started acting as resistance, and it's just kind of been uh, trickling down ever since. And you can see there's just not a lot of support until we get down to that three thousand dollar to twenty-five hundred dollar area. Now we did have this prior low here that we could bounce off of on Coinbase. That was at about uh, thirty-one. Uh, let's see, 3140, I believe it was on Coinbase. Um, so we're there about, so we could come down, create that double bottom of that 3140 and then take off. Um, that's a possibility, guys. Uh, but overall, we could just see that this, this, this looking out at the weekly chart, that the chart is extremely, extremely bearish looking. And it's going to take a whole lot to break through all these levels of resistance that price is going to have to go through to finally get back above break this bearish trend and send us on that bull run that everyone's hoping for. And you're going to know when that happens, guys, not be, not when price spikes, because we, we've, we've had a, a spike in price before and it just ends up uh, being temporary and comes right back down. What that, what that spike in price needs to be back with, as I always tell you, is volume. Volume is key. Without volume, guys, any spike in price is very, very likely going to be temporary and it's just going to be a, a temporary possible bull trap just to continue the bearish trend. Um, so just keep that in mind. Any spike in price must be backed by volume. And by volume, I mean we need to get uh, daily volume up above 10 billion on a daily, consistent daily basis. Until we see that, this thing could very likely just be a temporary, uh, any, any spike will be temporary very likely and could just continue the, uh, uh, the bearish trend and trap people into high long positions. Um, so I just want to keep you, uh, keep you guys aware of that. <clears throat> I know I can often sound like a broken record when I say that, guys, but when I talk about volume, when I talk about all those things, but uh, I do that for the benefit of obviously keeping you guys informed and, and, uh, and pounding it kind of into your head so you don't get uh, you don't get trapped into those long positions, but I also do it for the benefit of those people that are just tuning in for the first time and maybe haven't seen the prior videos. All right, looking at the uh, four-hour RSI, we can see the four-hour RSI similarly is getting squeezed tighter and tighter, a series of higher lows lower highs um, and as it gets squeezed tighter and tighter again it does suggest a possible larger move um, larger move is coming coming over here looking at the longs for shorts and again i know i uh, talked about this last time sorry guys not longs for shorts but looking at our uh, moving averages and exponential moving averages uh, we can see that we had this drop price got caught right at the bottom of the bollinger band we're looking at the four hour chart now right at the bottom bollinger band here um, which uh, and, and then just kind of started moving sideways creating kind of a possible bear flag here which again tells me that we may see a continuation to the downside if we uh, pull out here to the daily chart uh, we can see that we are uh, the Bollinger Bands are continuing to kind of uh, get uh, um, uh, tightened. They're kind of bottlenecking here. Uh, we can see that we've had sideways movement here for quite some time. We can see that the uh, 8.21, 55-day EMA as well as the 50-day moving average are all kind of converging on each other here. All those things suggest a possible larger move to come. Um, so now, does that mean that has to happen? No, absolutely not. It's just a possible, it's just one sign of, uh, of, of many, one piece of the puzzle when you're kind of looking at this and trying to putting all this together, trying to predict where price is going to go. Uh, we've been unable to break above this eight day EMA on the daily chart guys, which is extremely bearish as well. Um, or, uh, one of the things that I'm going to be watching is obviously a break above the eight day EMA. But what I always tell you is to watch that 21 day EMA on the daily chart. Um, if you can break above that 21 day EMA decisively, um, that typically typically um, does signal a shift in momentum in favor of the bulls. Until that happen, guys, uh, until that does happen, guys, it's just um, a, a oftentimes just a continuation to the downside. So by decisive, I mean a daily candle, both opening and closing above that 21 day EMA. When that does happen, that could signal, it doesn't mean it always will, but it's a very good sign um, uh, probability wise that momentum is at least temporarily is shifting in favor of the bulls in this case, but be it breaking above. That also works in reverse when it breaks below. Um, but in this case, obviously we'd be breaking above. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. Quickly switching over to EOS. This will be very quick. Um, EOS is still uh, has this kind of descending support line that it's been following here, guys. It's been unable to really decisively break up above this 245 resistance. Um, we, you know, just breaking above briefly, but nothing real decisive um, above that 245 resistance. Basically, it's kind of just hovering around. If I go swing low, swing high um, of this overall structure here, we can see that it's hovering right around the 50-day, or excuse me, not the 50-day, I've said the 50-day moving 
you know, right around the uh, the 50 fib level, um, just kind of hovering right around it. We bounced right perfectly right off of the uh, 618 fib that uh, that golden ratio, and then just kind of came back up to the 50 and been bouncing on top of that uh, really ever since. Um, and what I'm going to be watching here closely, guys, is it does look to me if I come over here and I look at volume on EOS over the last few days, um, really over the last week, we can see we were at 860, um, 860 million on the day, dropped down to about eight, um, dropped down to about six, uh, six, uh, six, uh, let's see, sorry guys, uh, 678 million, um, 648 million, slowly trickling off until we're today, or yesterday we were at 528 million, uh, and today we're sitting at 495 million. So we've been slowly dropping off in volume. EOS has been, as we've been just kind of consolidating, really just moving sideways. Again, that does suggest a possible larger move to come as, as uh, volume is decreasing. I think EOS is going to follow Bitcoin. In fact, you know, I, I'm fairly certain it will. Um, so I think likely we're going to get another drop in, if, assuming that Bitcoin does follow the path that I uh, think that it, it likely will take. I think EOS will likely drop down, possibly testing this descending support line, uh, possibly even going as low as that 211 area, and then bouncing up. And then we'll see at that point if it can break above, if we can get enough buy orders to fill to send that uh, to send us on a nice little bounce up above that 245. If we can decisively break up above 245, get at least up above this 270 area here, get between 270 and uh, three dollars. Um, this kind of kind of consolidate into this zone here. I'll start to get a little more bullish at least in the short term. Uh, uh, but for now, guys, I'd be looking if you're looking for an entry point into EOS, I'd be watching this area right down here, possibly at least on Bitfinex. I'd be looking for an entry report somewhere around 215 to 211, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'd be targeting somewhere around 235 to 245. And again, I'd get in and I'd get out unless you're planning on holding for the long haul. If you're planning on holding for a year or two, by all means, dollar cost average again is not a bad idea. If you're looking for a day and or scalp trade, though, I'd be looking for an entry somewhere around, uh, you know, somewhere around 220, 215, 211, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'd be targeting 235 to 245. Just do not get greedy, guys. Get in and get out and take your profits. I'd have a very tight stop loss here, possibly somewhere around maybe um, uh, 205, somewhere in that area, guys. That's where I'd have my stop loss sitting uh, for EOS. Quickly looking over at Ethereum, guys. Ethereum basically is looking to me like it's going to also, it, obviously, it's also following Bitcoin. We had this nice little rally. Ethereum then dropped off the board here, and it's just been, cons been consolidating sideways since about January 29th. Um, and we can see that it's finding support right on, in fact, let me just draw a quick, uh, uh, quick little, uh, Ray on it. We can see right in this area, there's a lot of structure. Uh, we could, price came down, created support, 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 came down, support, 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 and then it broke back down, came back up. What was support acted as resistance for three days, one, two, and on the third day, it finally broke above. We went on that bull run, came back down, support, 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 support for the last week or so. Um, so this is a decent area of support, and we all know as well as um, support the more uh, the more support is tested, the weaker that it gets. Uh, today we had a nice little wick that broke below that support here, uh, created if we kind of zoom in here, um, almost uh, um, uh, creating a new a new low in uh, relation to this little wick right back here. Um, so that does tell me that there's a very high probability that we are going to come back down lower. Now, obviously, if uh, Bitcoin were to jump, I think Ethereum would follow along with it. But it looks to me like this thing is very bearish looking. It looks to me like we could very likely come down and at least test this little area right down here, possibly right around 100. Um, that's where these wicks were uh, bouncing right here. That's where we had a little structure right here and a little structure right here, possibly coming down, hitting that 100. If 100 does break down though, guys, if that, so that's a good psychological support. If we do break below $100, guys, I think it'll be a very, and again, I'm looking at Coinbase. It may vary depending on your exchange, but that's the, I do believe if that does end up breaking down, guys, it'll be a very quick drop to at least this order structure right here sitting in between right around uh, 92 and 89 dollars if not the all the way coming down to about 80 dollars here um, so there's a lot of room for ethereum to drop um, if you are looking for an entry point on ethereum um, i'd be very 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 cautious in my opinion i'd be looking at possibly looking for a quick buy at uh, at 100 but i'd go in very 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 light um, unless you're wanting to kind of uh, a dollar cost average in and or um, ladder your buys in in other words laddering buys between 
between $100 all the way down to uh, right around $88 if you wanted to kind of ladder in buys in that area is not a bad idea looking for a nice little bounce off that area guys but again it is I would go in very very light I wouldn't go in heavy at all until we do break this trend now if we do get ethereum coming all the way down to $80 here this is where I'd probably go in heavy between about $85 and $80 but I'd have a very very tight stop loss right around $78 $77 knowing that if ethereum does break below that $80 range we could find ourselves down at $50 $52 very very quickly if things go south I'm not saying that's a probability in fact I don't think that's a probability I do not think that's going to happen but it is a possibility and something that you guys need to be aware of all right and finally let's come over here and quickly cover ripple ripple is still falling within this falling wedge here um, and uh, it, it's very similar to Bitcoin. It's kind of been testing the top of this wedge here, but just, uh, you know, just, just following it almost perfectly. Um, and it looks to me like there's a very good chance that uh, that Ripple is going to come back down, um, retest at least $27, $28. But if that does break down, guys, if we break below this order structure uh, right here, we could very quickly fall down to at least this prior low back here, sitting at about 26. But very, very likely, if I come all the way back here, we look at the order structure here, we can see that there's just not a lot of support until we get down to about $25, $24. Um, and I would expect, excuse me, 24 cents, 25, 24 cents, somewhere in that neighborhood so in other words somewhere in this area the bottom of that apex of that falling wedge um, so it wouldn't it would make sense to me if you are looking at buying ripple um, if to wait for a possible drop in price possibly starts a ladder in right around 27 26 cents but I'd really wait till it gets down to that 24 25 cent range possibly even lower than that we could find ourselves down at a 20 cent ripple very very quickly um, if thing if you know if all hell breaks loose but I don't believe so I think that there's a good chance we come back down possibly testing this uh, 24 23 cent range and then we get a nice little spike up in price and again I just like Bitcoin I would not get greedy if you do end up buying right around that 24 cent 24 25 uh, even 23 cent range if you do end up buying there guys I would look to get out right in this order structure right here guys I'd look to be getting out somewhere around 28 29 cents I think a lot of people are going to be targeting 30 so if you try to get out before 30 that's going to that, that would be a, a very good way to kind of play it safe um, even uh, again I would not get greedy guys I'd even start looking to get out right around 27 cents or somewhere in that neighborhood even taking your profit off the table if we uh, um, get up around 26 20 something like 26 27 take your profit off the table and then let the rest ride if that's what you want to do I'm more of a conservative trader I'm just taking small scalps here and there so if I can make you know if I can make three four five percent on a trade I'll get in I'll get out if I miss out on some more upside that's fine guys I, I, I have no problem with that as long as I'm protecting my fiat so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things there if you have any comments questions suggestions please let me know in the comment section below as always would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content until next time guys please trade safe take care of yourselves this is working signing out